Listen, we're going to be talking about today new hearts. New hearts. This Lent season has been a blessing to me. I hope it's been a blessing to you. We as a church have just really decided that in this season where we are right now, we're going to push forward into all that God has for us. And we're going to pursue the presence of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Because it's the presence of the Lord that makes us who we are and gives us the strength from day to day. It's all those things that we need in our personal lives. And so the leadership of this church, a lot of people on the platform, we've all been talking and it seems like the Lord is just stirring all of us in the same way. And that's that the Lord wants us to run after Him with reckless abandonment. That it's time for the church to get serious about discipleship. And it's time for the church to get real serious about the presence of the Lord. And saints of God, I want you to know something today. This is our highest calling. You hear me? That's your highest calling. Your highest calling is to pursue Jesus as a believer. Your highest calling is not to be on this platform. Your highest calling is not to be a worship leader. Your highest calling is not to be an instrumentalist, to play drums or the guitar or the piano. Your highest calling, John White, is not to just preach the gospel. Your highest calling is not to just be a missionary or to be involved in youth or the nursery or kids' ministry. No. Your highest calling is to make Jesus your highest priority. Come on, that deserves a hand clap of of agreement. I'm telling you. And so the church has got to relearn some things. You know, for the last few years, and listen, I'm guilty of this too. Our church wanted to be a tip of the spear church. Pastor John, what do you mean by that? I meant that we wanted to do things in a way that unsaved people or people who had questions or maybe people who were in a backslidden state could come here, okay, and not feel a religious spirit. That may be here, after maybe being burnt in other churches or whatever the case may have been. That here that they could find a place where they could pursue the Lord. And that we would do our red letter best here to provide an environment where people could do that. And if you're not careful when you're creating a church like that. There's some tension there, and if you're not careful, you'll go too far to the other extreme, and you don't take time to teach the folks who believe in Jesus that there's a responsibility on them too. Because we spend an awful lot of time here in this church telling people how they become believers. And it's simple here. I still believe... That the gospel is pretty simple. That what you have to do to be saved is to believe on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and you are saved. You you cannot earn it. Someone sent me a video of a man on the street kind of interview. I don't know why you would... uh, uh, You know, accost someone in a Walmart, but they did. (laughs) And they were... They were having a conversation with a Muslim. And they were trying their best to get this Muslim to understand that Jesus is the way. And they were arguing with him. And how many of you know that the announcement of the kingdom of God is just that? It's not an argument. Miss Ann, you ain't going to argue anybody into the kingdom of God. You're just not. The announcement is this. Jesus is the victorious son of God. 
and he reigns supreme and no one is going to get to the Father but by him. That's the, that's the message. And this person in Walmart rejected that whole cloth. No, Jesus is not the Son of God. But Ambrose, he is the Son of God. And so that person was trying to argue that Muslim into the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something. As I said, you're not going to argue anybody into the kingdom. All you can do is make the announcement that Jesus is the strong Son of God. And if the Holy Ghost has been doing the preparatory work behind the scenes on that person's heart, then they will respond to that message. If not, then we move on. We don't get in arguments with people. We declare that Jesus is the Son of God. And we tell them they must repent. Because that's one part that maybe a lot of churches are missing out on. Ambrose, I'm going to get you help. Give me two chairs, please. There's one right there. Y'all give it up for Ambrose. He's just a man. I'm just telling you. I don't know how long this is going to take. And I actually don't care. Because we're going to do gospel stuff today. Come on, somebody. And y'all know I like to use chairs to represent people. For some weird reason. I don't know. But listen. Listen. I'm going to say something very controversial, okay? And you're going to gasp when you hear it. But just get your nerves all tucked in and hold on. Let me explain it. We have got the church. We have got to stop telling people who are unredeemed that God loves them unconditionally. Some of y'all got your back up over that statement. Let me explain it, please. If we tell the unredeemed, Jonathan, that God loves them through Jesus unconditionally, what do they have to repent of? Nothing. Nothing. God loves me unconditionally. I have nothing to repent of. He loves me. I can stay right here. I don't have to repent. I don't have to stop doing drugs. I don't have to stop sleeping around. I don't have to do anything. Because he loves me unconditionally. Now, I'm not sure that the best evangelistic tool is Paul's tool which is you're an enemy of God and if you don't repent you're going to die and bust tail wide open I'm not sure that would work in our culture either come on but it might and so the church has got to not only preach That Jesus is the true Son of God and that no one comes to the Father but by Him. But we also have to let our culture know that they got to repent. And that they have to renounce the ways of Satan. You hear me? you got to renounce the ways of Satan. You have to say, yes, I'm believing that Jesus is is the true, strong Son of God. And I am renouncing Satan and all of his ways. And I will submit to the lordship of Jesus. And he will be my king and he will be my lord. And I will do what the Bible tells me to do. That's the gospel. And we have forgotten, church, that the world is going to cringe at that. Can I be honest? I almost cringe at that, Miss Ann. But it be true. So, I've busted the world's chops long enough. Let's bust the chops of the, of the church. We got way too many church people living like a devil. Come on. Are we going to do Lent right or are we going to do Lent right? 
Are we going are, are, are we going to take some time to get right with Jesus or are we not? And I understand it gets quiet in an operating room. I get it. So I don't expect you to shout me down this morning. That's all right. I'm confident, Charles, in who I am. If I get one amen or none, I'm still going home this afternoon after a great lunch and having a great nap. It bothers me not at all. So, we got a lot of church folks who are stuck right here. They've left that chair. They've, they've said, okay, I believe that Jesus is the true Son of God. And if the Bible's clear, if you confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart, you'll be saved. And here's the thing about it. The church that I grew up in, which was a holiness church, okay, believed that you were not going to go to heaven based only on your confession of faith that you had to live a perfect life. Now raise your hand if you're perfect this morning. (laughs) Yeah, me neither, right? But that doesn't mean that we don't strive, come on, to renounce the ways of Satan. And I think that maybe what we're doing a lot of times in churches anymore is that we're just celebrating that we're saved and we forget that there is something on the inside of us that should be striving to become more like Jesus. Then, oh, I don't know, that maybe we should start thinking like the Lord. That maybe we should start talking like the Lord. That maybe our hands and feet should be doing something for the kingdom of God. Right? That, oh, I don't know, what's the name of this? That we have a new heart. That the Lord puts a heart in us that's desiring to do the things that He wants us to do. And so if you'll stop and take time, Sam, to read through the scriptures... The Bible is constantly encouraging those of us who were saved to pursue righteousness and to pursue holiness and to do everything that we can do to cultivate a living, breathing relationship with the one who saved us. Understanding that we'll never arrive this side of glory. Come on. But we should strive for it. Jonathan and I have had long talks about this. I have in my Christian walk, and I've been saved, I've told you, over 20 years. You know what the strongest, the, the hardest thing for me as a believer is when I start pursuing the Lord. John, you know what the hardest thing is for me, brother? I turn into a Pharisee. Because I start getting right with the Lord. And how come everybody else ain't? Don't you know that's sin? And we get on our high horse, okay? And we forget the hole God dug us out of. And so now we walk around all high and mighty, you know, like our poop don't stink. And everybody else is walking around, you know, and I'm the only one around here who loves Jesus. I'm the only one around here who's going to make it to heaven. I'm the only one. Everybody else is dying going to hell except for me. And how come everybody else can't get into it today? How come everybody else ain't worshiping like I am? Can't y'all see me worshiping? And there's this thing that clicks on the inside of me. I'm looking around like, am I the only one? No, you're not the only one. Stop it. Knock it off. Quit being a Pharisee. And so, John and I have talked about this. Jonathan and I have talked about this. It's like, it seems like as soon as we start flipping that switch and say, okay, I'm going to get serious. Like this scripture here, James 4 4. You adulterous people, Lord knows I don't want to be called that. But the Bible calls me that if I don't get it, that friendship with the world means I'm an enemy to God. And that if I spend all my time seeking after the pleasures of this world, 
then I am creating within me a separation between myself and the Lord. And so I get this. I have to strive. But it becomes two things for me. Either I become legalistic. Right? And everything's a sin. Oh, well, don't you know you're not supposed to go to the movies? You know? Oh, wait, don't you know you're not supposed to be listening to that? Don't you know you ain't supposed to be doing this and doing that? And they get over here and all of a sudden everything's legalistic. Or I become pharisaical. Or I get into a place where I think that my, my, my going to heaven is based on what I'm doing. Which is wrong also. And we forget what God's called us to. Is to pursue Him. So that we can look like Him. And be like Him. And enjoy His presence forever. Y'all. And that we got peace with the Lord. And we walk in victory. And we're doing it because we love the Lord and we want to spend time in His presence. And all of a sudden, all the stuff that we thought was a big deal just doesn't add up anymore. It's just nonsense. And you start realizing, no man, if I'm in the presence of the Lord, it's so much sweeter. Such a better life for me. And so I don't want to be in the presence of the Lord or run after Jesus because I want to be holier than you. I don't even necessarily want to be running after Jesus because, oh, I get closer to the Lord and there's benefits in that. And I get a, I get a bigger ministry, Seth. And I get, I'll get a bigger platform. I've got a big enough platform. I just want the Lord. I want to have peace in my heart. I want to walk in victory, y'all. I don't want to live in this world and everything that's got in it, but I'm afraid that the church, we spend too much time going after stuff that's not of the Lord. Go to that next slide for me back there, will you please? 1 John 2, for everything in the world, not some things, everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, I want things, my body wants stuff, the lust of the eyes, the materialism, Sam, I see what other people have, I want that too, pride of life. I want people to think something of me. I want to be somebody. And all the stuff that we're told to run after and to pursue in the pursuit of the American dream is actually doing the opposite for us saints. It's depleting us and we're concentrating on things that's not good for us. And we're sowing things into our hearts. And we're walking around. And we can't figure out why we're miserable. It's because we're reaping what we're sowing. We have sown so much of this world. And the pursuit of this world into our hearts. We have pursued that stuff so much and we have planted so much of that into our hearts that it's starting to grow. You understand that stuff grows too. And now we're in a place to where we're like, oh Lord, now what? I tell you what. That woman may reject Jesus. I'm not. It's just time for the church to repent. 
It's just time for the church to say, Lord, you know what? Done with pursuing this world. Let me turn this thing around. Let me pursue Jesus and his righteousness and his kingdom and his peace. Let me start sowing that into my heart. Let me start doing some of that. Let me start sowing virtue into my heart. Let me start sowing peace into my heart. Let me start doing these things here so that that stuff brings forth fruit. And maybe through that, I'll live a different life. Such as the life of the believer. Now listen, you don't have to do any of this. You hear me? If you have said that Jesus is the Son of God and you believe that with your heart and you confess that with your mouth, you're going to heaven. I'm just saying, if that's not enough for you and you're miserable, perhaps it's time for a new heart. Perhaps it's time to repent, okay, and to become a believer in Jesus fully, forsaking the world and everything that's in it, and running after Jesus with reckless abandonment, which is what this season of Lent's all about, right? Where we draw lines in the sand and say, yeah, I'm done with that. I'm going to pursue the Lord. Go to the next slide for me because I'm telling you now, if you, if you decide to do this, it requires some of us to get radical. I don't know if you read this verse or not. This is radical. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble... Cut it off, throw it away. Do what? Because th- this is all, listen, I-, I bring this up every week the weapon of mass distraction. If this is causing you to stumble, you want to talk about getting radical. This phone was $1,000. Thank God it's on a payment plan. Jonathan Radical. If this is causing me to stumble, next time I go over the Catawba River, I roll my window down and chuck it. Cut it off. If your arm or your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off, throw it away. It's better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to go with have two hands and two feet and be thrown into hell. Ouch, Jesus. That's not fair. If your eye causes you to stumble, if you're watching things you should not watch, Gouge it out. Ouch. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to go to hell. This is radical obedience to the things of Jesus. Who's back there running things? Ian? Go to, you think that's bad? Go to the scripture, brother, where it's mother and father. You want to get radical? You want... Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Wow. I love my children. How about y'all? Sometimes, right? Well, they don't grate our nerves. But let's be honest. There's times where I can't get enough of them. I look at them and I'm overcome with pure joy. There's other times I look at them and I think, why God, why? Right? There's, there's, I don't know if there's anything I wouldn't do for my kids.
when it comes to my relationship with the Lord, I love that boy of mine. I love them girls of mine. Listen to me, y'all. They're a distant third at best. Because Miss Kristen's second. I love them kids. But at best, they're a distant third. If you're going to compare them to my Lord who saved me, who ran after me and pursued me, when I wasn't even looking for him, y'all, then I've got something to, to give back to God. Worship team, come on back up here. We're almost out of time this morning. And if you'll make your way up here quickly. and Listen, I've said it this whole time that we've been together, y'all. It's just time in this season of Lent to prepare our hearts and our minds to pursue the things of God. Come on, somebody. And look, we've been opening up these altars. And come on up here, Shannon. Plug in as quickly as you can and get to play. And make sure that she's unmuted back there, please. And it's just time for the church to do what we need to do. And if you believe, if you're a believer this morning... And you believe in the power of the blood of Jesus and that it can reach anywhere that it needs to reach. Highest mountain, lowest valley, it don't matter. If you believe that. And you also know that you're walking beneath your potential here today as a believer in Jesus. We're going to open up these altars. And I'm going to invite you to be courageous today. To come on forward down here and spend a little time with the Lord today. And repent. Pastor John, you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. We spent a little time today repenting, okay, and making things right. And maybe making a commitment to the Lord that we're going to start pursuing Him. Maybe it's time that we start taking some stuff, cutting that hand off, plucking that eye out, and to pursue the things of God. And I'm here to tell you, listen to me. If you take that step, there's no way God's not going to meet you. But you got to take that step. Everybody in the Bible had to take a step. The woman with the issue of blood, she had to take a step. Blind Bartimaeus, beaten, making all that racket. Hey, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He had to take a step. You got to take a step. Stand to your feet today. Juliana, sing about that blood. Come on. If you need to come on down here, come on down here. I'm already down here. I'll meet you. Come on down here and let's worship the Lord and repent. Get things right with the Lord today. Come on. Come on. Don't you sit there and act like that's not you today. You know. Don't fight with the Lord. Surrender. Surrender to the Lord. If that's you, surrender and get yourself on down here. And make things right with the Lord. Come on. It will never lose His power. Come on, if you need to get on down here, let's do it. Don't you sit there and let the devil rob you of a blessing. Don't you do it. Thank you, Lord. Come on, sing it one more time, Juliana. Come on, team. Worship the Lord with me today. Let's get things right with the Lord.
Father, we have humbled ourselves before you today. We've asked you, Lord God, and invited you into our lives today. Lord, we know that we have fallen short. But thanks be to God for the grace of Jesus who meets us where we need to be met. And Father, today we are grateful for the blood that it reaches us where we are. And Father, for these ones who have responded today, and maybe there's people out there who say, I just didn't feel comfortable coming forward. I pray that in your own way, sometime in the next day or two, this message and the, the impactfulness of these words will reach you. And that you will afresh and anew pursue the righteousness of God. So Father, the advancements that these saints of God have made, I pray Lord God that you will sustain them and continue to draw them forward in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Grant that to them and to us. We ask in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Well, can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness to us today. There are some ushers that are going to be up here. If you have a gift to bring today, please do so. I wish you nothing but the very best. Raise your hands to the heavens. Receive this blessing. It's yours as a child of the King. Now, may the Lord bless you. And may God keep you. And may the Lord make His face to shine upon you. May God be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance on you. And may He give you peace. Receive that today in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you in the Lord. Go.